Hello everyone. First of all, if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my mailing list. You can find the link to it below this video. And today, I want to show you how to handle log footage in DaVinci Resolve. I will show you the basic node tree you can use with any log footage if you want to use LUTs. And this is our before and after. I hope you'll find this video helpful. Let's start. And this is the clip for today. I got it from ArtGrid. And my clip was shot with Blackmagic Ursa camera in log. But as I said, you'll be able to use the same node tree for any other log footage. I will open my node graph then. I've already created the structure of my node tree, but I'll walk you through it step by step. And dealing with log footage, first we have to start from converting the clip to Rec709 or in case you want to use LUTs, to Cineon Film Lock. And the best way of doing it is by using the Color Space Transform. And I have put my Color Space Transform node after my other correction nodes, as you can see. And I did it because if I put it at the beginning, I would lose a lot of the color information, especially in the shadows and highlights from my clip. So remember, always put your color correction nodes before CSD. And you should only put some additional effects like a vignette, halation, glow, etc. after the CSD. Okay, I hope this makes sense. So now let's open the effects tab. Let's search for the color space transform and let's drop it onto our CSD node. And now you always should know how your clip was shot. So you'll know what settings you should use in here. And my clip input color space is Blackmagic Design 4.6 Film Gen 3. Then the input gamma is Blackmagic Design 4.6K Film. And now my clip has been converted to Rec709, as this is a default setting of the project. And if we were not using LUTs, we would leave the clip as it is. But as I'm planning to use one of DaVinci Resolve input LUTs, I have to convert my clip to Cineon Film Lock, as these LUTs were designed for the Cineon Film Lock. Okay, so now we have to change the output gamma to Cineon Film Lock, like this. And now our clip is ready for the LUT. So let's close the effects tab and let's move to the LUT node. And here let's just right click on it. Then let's go to Film Looks. And let's pick one of these six LUTs with Rec709 at the beginning, as they were designed to convert the Cineon Film Lock color space to the Rec709 color space. I will pick the Fujifilm D55, which is the warmest version of all LUTs. But you feel free to check what works best and also what you like most for your footage. And this is before and after. Now we can move to adjusting our footage. So let's move to our correction nodes. And I always start from adjusting the exposure. And I will use my primaries to do it. And obviously, I'll be looking at my scopes to make sure that everything is in the right range. So I'll push my gain up first, then lift down just a tiny bit, and then gamma down. And usually, I also like to add more contrast using the contrast slider over here, like this. And this is before and after. Now let's move to the balance node. Here we don't need to improve the balance a lot, the shot looks good, but we can use the balance node to adjust skin tones a little bit better, as skin tones are usually the most important when grading. So let's zoom in, so you can see better. And here I will use my temp slider, I will just move it attached to the right to add more warmth to the skin, like this, and this is before and after. Okay, let's zoom out. And now I have here two layer nodes I use very often. We create them by hitting Option L. I've got my look at the top and skin tones at the bottom. And again, I have shown you many times how to use the layer nodes, but in case someone doesn't know it, the node at the bottom always takes a priority over the node at the top. So when we isolate the skin on this bottom node, the look we create on the node above it will not affect our skin tones. 
So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's click on the skin tones node first. And now we could simply qualify the skin tones using the qualifier tool over here. Like this, selecting the skin tones and then using the sliders to refine it. But there's one other way of doing it that sometimes works faster. So we can go here to color, then presets. And let's pick six vector red. And now all the red tones have been qualified. But let's improve this selection. Like this. So we select more of the skin. And I know I was actually talking about qualifying only skin tones, but selecting the orange suit will also make the clip benefit from it. And now let's just denoise our selection over here. And let's turn off the highlight. And now let's move to the look node. And here, using my primary wheels, my gamma and possibly the gain wheel, I will create a look. I will add a bit of the blue color to the clip, like this. And let me show you what would have happened if I haven't isolated the skin tones before. So let's disable the skin tones node. And you see, if we haven't isolated it, we would lose all the natural color of the skin. Okay, let's zoom out. And now we can move to all the other additional adjustments I have placed after the CST and the LAT nodes. So first we have a vignette, and I love using vignettes, as this way we can bring even more attention to the main subject. So let's click on the node, and then I will go to the power windows, and I will grab the ellipse, then I will place it over the main subject and I will soften it. And now I will reverse my power window over here as I want to adjust what's outside the power window, not what's inside. And then let's go to the curves and let's grab a white curve somewhere in the middle and let's push it down a bit. Okay, and this is before and after. And look how this simple trick has brought all the attention to the character. And also it's a moving shot, so we obviously have to track our power window. Perfect. And now let's move to another effect I use very often, which is glow. Also remember that after the CST node, we can use all sorts of different effects. Another great option would be to use halation. And I have a video on my channel, how to use halation. This video is available to watch only for my channel members. So if you're interested, please consider joining my channel membership. But coming back to the glow, we have to grab it from the effects tab. And here let's change the composite type from add to soft light. And now let's scroll back up and let's decrease shine threshold a bit. And this is before and after. And now there's one more step to do if you are a studio version user. As at the very beginning, I have put a note called noise reduction. And also remember that it's best to perform the noise reduction at the very beginning. So let's zoom into the clip quite a lot so you can see how noisy my clip is. And let's play it. I hope you can see the noise on YouTube. And now let's grab the noise reduction from the effects. And let's just increase Luma and Gamma threshold over here. And this is before and after. Thank you so much for watching my videos guys, I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.